Okay, so now we are looking at making qualitative estimates of pH change. So no calculations here, but more of a conceptual discussion about uh, our understanding of pH and hydronium ion concentration. So let's look at some background information that we can use to tackle this. So three different important relationships that you kind of need to have a grasp on to be able to tackle this example problem or this topic in Alex. And the first is here in this, this first row. Look at this first row here. For acidic solutions, the hydronium ion concentration is greater than the hydroxide ion concentration. If the solution is considered basic, the hydronium ion concentration is less than the hydroxide ion concentration. And for neutral solutions, the hydronium ion concentration is equal to the hydroxide concentration. Okay? The second important relationship you need to understand is that when acid is added to a solution, the hydronium ion concentration should go up, and as a result, the hydroxide ion concentration goes down. And the opposite is true when base is added. The hydronium ion concentration goes down, but the hydroxide ion concentration goes up. Well, why does this happen? Remember the auto-ionization of water. The ion product constant Kw, which is 1 times 10 to the negative 14, is equal to the concentration of hydronium ion multiplied by the concentration of hydroxide ion. So if I add acid to a solution, what's going to go up? This is going to go up. Well, on the other hand, this must go down if that is going to stay the same at that specific temperature. And because it is a constant, an ion product constant, this will go down to compensate for this going up. And again, the opposite is true. If I have a solution and I add base to it, well, the concentration of base is going to go up. And so the hydronium ion concentration must go down because again, at 25 degrees Celsius, that is the ion product constant for the auto ionization of water. The last relationship is this, between hydronium ion concentration and pH. So this is our pH scale here. And again, pH can be below zero or above 14, but, but typically we're just dealing with pHs between zero and 14. So low pHs have a higher hydronium ion concentration than higher pHs, which have a lower hydronium ion concentration. So now let's look at this topic and see what we can do with it. So they want us to fill out these rows. And so for solution A, the initial components of solution A is just water. So if it's just water, what is the initial type of the solution? Well, it's going to be a neutral solution to start with. It's just water. Yes, water does ionize, but again, the auto ionization of water, the concentration of this and this for pure water are exactly the same, one times 10 to the negative seven. And so that would be a neutral solution because the concentrations are equal. Now, if I add sodium iodide, I add solute, does it change anything as far as the pH of this pure water? No, it will not. Because even though this is an ionic compound, sodium iodide is ionic, which means that it is a strong electrolyte. Strong electrolytes, when they dissolve, break apart into their into their ions. That would be sodium metal ion and iodide. When I look at this, even though this dissolves in the water, when it dissolves, it does not affect the hydronium ion, nor does it affect the hydroxide ion concentration, which means that it has no effect on the pH. pH will remain the same. Let's look at solution B. Solution B has to start with water and potassium hydroxide. So this solution will be basic to begin with. Why basic? Because 
the hydroxide ion concentration will be greater than the hydronium ion concentration. If I add potassium bromide, well, if I add KBr, that's an ionic compound, which again is a strong electrolyte. And strong electrolytes, when dissolved in solution, break apart into their ions. So this would break apart into potassium metal ion and iodide. Neither one of those will affect the hydronium ion concentration. And so the pH will again remain the same. For solution C, we begin with water and potassium hydroxide again. So the solution is initially basic. If I add hydrobromic acid, so I add HBr. HBr is one of the seven strong acids. As a strong acid, it is a strong electrolyte. And so that when it dissolves in water, it breaks apart into this and this. And of course, I should have indicated aqueous for each of these ions as well. So if I look here, because of the addition of HBr, what I have is the concentration of H plus or hydronium ions in the solution is going to increase. And so because the concentration of H, of H plus is increasing, high over here, low over here, so it's increasing in this direction, what happens to the pH? The pH decreases. So the pH is lower. I can also look here and see the and come to the same conclusion. When acid is added, hydronium ion concentration goes up, which causes the pH to drop. Well, solution D, our initial component is just water, so we begin with a neutral solution again. This time I add sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is a strong base. Strong bases are strong electrolytes. When dissolved in solution, they break apart. This is dissolved in water, so it breaks apart into sodium metal ion, hydrated, and hydroxide ions. And so now, the concentration of hydroxide ions in solution has increased. And because the concentration of hydroxide uh, went up, that means that the H plus concentration went down. It became lower. So if hydronium ion concentration is becoming lower, it's going this direction, then the pH is going to increase. The pH is higher.